about four years ago, four summers ago actually, uh, I got a call from Dr. Jackson uh, asking me if I had a summer job, and I, you know, I didn't have one at the time, so I, and he offered me one, and I said, sure. And the job was with the, uh, the Summer Medical and Dental Education Program that's held at the, uh, I think at the, that time it was MMEP, which is the Minority Medical Education Program. It's gone through two or three names since then. But um, so my job essentially uh, is to take the students that were pre-med and pre-dental from this innocent summer enrichment program and take them out up to Mount Vernon where they have the migrant farm worker camps and in coordination with the CMAR community clinic um, provide things like free dental screening for kids, TB tests, uh, blood sugar tests, blood pressure, and give presentations on AIDS, nutrition, and places. so forth. And this is pictures from here. This picture here on the right is just a snapshot of the amount of kids we saw in one day at this camp. We went up there with uh, about 72 toothbrushes, five boxes of 12. Half an hour into screenings where we gave a kid a toothbrush and a mouth mirror after the screening, we ran out of toothbrushes. And we were still screening kids for about half an hour more until we ran out of mouth mirrors. Now you're looking at 100 plus kids here, all who need regular preventative care. About 50 to 60 percent of them who has some type of active decay, whether it's uh, you know single cavity to baby bottle tooth decay, um, you know where all the fronts are just completely rotted out. We had one kid that actually had an abscess, and we had to tell the parent and uh, actually have one of the assistants help take the kid to the emergency room because there was swelling and the kid was in pain. Um, but you know you leave these areas, you know you come away from these camps where you see this immense need and progressively you see the amount of resources, the amount of clinicians rate willing to either donate or actually work. No, because these camps are not in, 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 in a, they're not right in front of you. You have to take back ropes to get these camps. People in Mount Vernon don't know that these yeah. camps, I've been participating in, in this clinic here is in Longview, Washington. It's a Kaiser uh, Permanente clinic and once a quarter they donate uh, 10 operatories all materials, full complement of staff. All we need to provide is uh, uh, dentist supervisors and volunteer students. And we come out there and we see about 50 to 60 patients and do dentistry for a whole day for free, once a quarter. And I actually took the reins and I'm actually coordinating this now. And uh, this is, again is another rural area like the, like the first case, the first example is here. Um, I had one kid who, at the time I was sporting a pretty big afro and he came in and he looked almost just like me, big afro, same complexion, and we just bonded right away. And I've seen him uh, three uh, consecutive visits now in the course of uh, what, nine months. And uh, you know, he comes up to me, he gives me a hug, and I've, I've made him, I guess, I, I made him the first time promise me that he was going to start taking care of his mouth. And if he came back without, uh, I talked to his mom, so if he came back the next time and he didn't have any cavities, he was going to get a yeah, reward. It's too it's too but we're producing professionals, and these professionals are in a career where you can ignore 80 percent of the need that's out there and still have a very lucrative income. And there's something inherently wrong, because with that, there's going to be no motivation yeah, for change. Talking, and DSHS came up, and he said, you know, I, you know, if I were you, I wouldn't even treat DSHS patients. Don't even worry about that. Uh, if you're, if, you're, if you're practicing built for it, if your staff aren't specifically trained to handle it, it's just too much of a hassle. They got community clinics to go to. Now, I'm standing there and I'm thinking, okay, my kids are on DSHS right now, all right? And he keeps talking about those people, these people. And so I, I, I wait for about 30 seconds. I raise my hand and I say, well, why? And he started stuttering and stammering and, oh, you know, they're unruly and they upset your staff and he got off the subject pretty quick. And I confronted him afterwards, and I told him, I said, you know, when you talk about these people you're not treating, that's, that's me. That's my kids you're talking about, and I'm, I'm highly offended. And uh, it's funny, he, he gave me this, he rambled for like 20 minutes, giving me what I call the I have black friends speech. But, <laughs> but, but in terms of dentistry and pro bono work and all this, all this stuff. So now every time he sees me, it's, it's, it's uh, I can tell, I, I called him out on his, on his line of BS, and he, it, there's an uncomfortability that he feels. And, um, but as, as, as hurtful as his remarks were, and as irresponsible, because he's a dental professional, that's a teacher, in an institution where we as students were very impressionable. You know? And as, as much as it hurt what he said, 
What hurt more was that I was the only one out of the class of 55 that said anything about it from a dental standpoint. We're not looking to just make professionals that are going out there and make money and pay their taxes. We're going to look, we're going to recruit people who show a long history of community service. People that come from areas, because even the people that do care about community service, they're going to go back to where they're comfortable. You know, and a lot of these um, migrant farm worker camps, they're not producing dentists from the camps. You guys have invested a lot of money, whether it's in programs or whether it's in scholarships, in people like the people that are on this panel. And you're going to get your return. Us, like uh, Esther was saying, we come from this. We come from that need. You know, I come from that need. And when I see where the profession is going, it's, it's hard to stay optimistic. The money and effort that, that you guys are providing you guys reinstill that optimism in students like myself who feel that um, we need that outside influence because from inside, the, the, the internal dental community is not doing what it's supposed to do.